The National War Labor Board was an agency of the United States government established on April 8, 1918 to mediate labor disputes during World War I. History The board was appointed by President Woodrow Wilson. It was composed of 12 members, including five representatives each from Business and the American Federation of Labor AFL, as well as co-chairs Frank P. Walsh and former President William Howard Taft. The decisions of the NWLB generally supported and strengthened the position of labor. Although it opposed the disruption of war production by strikes, it supported an eight-hour day for workers, equal pay for women, and the right to organize unions and bargain collectively. Although the NWLB had no coercive enforcement power, Wilson generally ensured compliance with its decisions. In general, the relative strength of organized labor in America grew substantially during the war. Union membership almost doubled after the formation of the NWLB. Of note, membership in the AFL rose from 2 million in 1916 to over 3 million in 1919. By the end of the decade, 15% of the non-agricultural workforce was unionized. In all, the board ruled on 1,245 cases. Almost 90% of them sprang from worker complaints, and five skilled trades accounted for 45%. Of the cases, 591 were dismissed, 315 were referred to other federal labor agencies, and 520 resulted in formal awards or findings. In reaching decisions, the board was aided by an office and investigative staff of 250 people. Approximately 700,000 workers in 1,000 establishments were directly affected. The board was disbanded on May 31, 1919, some six and a half months after the end of the war. Membership <inaudible> 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 The twelve members of the board were William Howard Taft Frank P. Walsh, first head of the Commission on Industrial Relations Frank Hayes, president of the United Mine Workers Thomas Savage of the International Association of Machinists, now the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers William Hutchison, leader of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America Victor Ollander of the International Siemens Union Thomas A. Rickert, President of the United Garment Workers of America L. F. Lorry, President of the Delaware and Hudson Railway C. Edwin Michael, former official of the National Association of Manufacturers Loyal A. Osborne, Vice President of Westinghouse W. H. Van der Voort, an East Moline, Illinois manufacturer B. L. T. Worden, Head of the Electric Boat Company See also War Labor Policies Board 1918-1919 Footnotes Further reading Valerie Jean Connor, The National War Labor Board, Stability, Social Justice, and the Voluntary State in World War I Chapel Hill, N.C., University of North Carolina Press, 2011. Richard B. Gregg, The National War Labor Board, Harvard Law Review, Vol. 33, No. 1, November 1919, pp. 39-63. In JSTOR. Topic. External links Guide to the United States NWLB Files 1913-1945 at Cornell University Library Records of the National War Labor Board World War I.